Welcome to Starbase, Texas. This, this is a, a city, it's actually legally a city, that uh, thanks to the hard work of the SpaceX team, we built out of nothing, and is now a gigantic rocket manufacturing system. So. Uh, and, and for people out there who are curious to see it, we're actually on a public highway, so you can come and visit and drive down the road and see the Epic hardware. So um, I think this is the first time that a rocket development program has actually been on a public highway. So you can come and see the Epic stuff. Um, we're, we're honored today to have uh, the Secretary of War, uh, Pete Hexev, uh, and much of the senior leadership of the Pentagon here. It's an honor to have them visit. We just did a tour of the factory, and, um, and I think this, it, it really helps illustrate how manufacturing and manufacturing at scale is critical to the strength of America. So, um, and I'll, I'll tell you a little bit just about the purpose of SpaceX. It's like, we want to make Star Trek real. <laughs> okay? We want to make... Starfleet Academy real so that it's not always science fiction but one day the science fiction turns to science fact and we have spaceships going through space big spaceships with people going to other planets going to the moon and ultimately going beyond our star system to other star systems where we may meet aliens uh, or discover long dead alien civilizations. I don't know, but we want to go <laughs> and we want to see what's happening and we want to have epic futuristic spaceships with lots of people in them traveling to places we've never been to before. Um, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the goal. Um, And, uh, and that's what I think the public thinks of when they think of Space Force. So, uh, on that note, I'd like to introduce the Secretary of War, Pete Hexa. Thank you. Thank you, appreciate it. Thank you very much. How about this? Star Trek real. Star Trek real. <laughs> yes. Appreciate it. I love it. Well, what a tour, what an opportunity to be here at Starbase, Texas, with Elon and the SpaceX team. There's nothing like this in America. There's nothing like this in the world. And what you have built and what you will build here is a testament to the strength of American ingenuity and American invention. So I want to thank all of you, all the folks out here for having us today. Elon, thank you so much for hosting us, for what you've built for the vision you have for this company, the vision you have for our country, the vision you have for American innovation. I could not think of a more fitting venue to continue our arsenal of Freedom Tour and to outline today the future of technological innovation at the War Department. 
Those of you here at SpaceX will appreciate this, knowing that as World War II was ending, the Secretary of War and Secretary of the Navy wrote to the National Academy of Sciences and declared that scientific research was essential to our national security. To ensure continued preparedness, they wrote, the research scientists of the United States must be called upon to continue in peacetime some substantial portion, that of which they have made so effectively during the stress of the present war. The competitive time element in developing those weapons and tactics may be decisive in future conflicts. You see, those secretaries of war and Navy many decades ago recognized the importance that innovation and readiness holds for our national security. They knew what was at stake, the very freedoms of the country we hold dear. All across the United States today, extraordinary innovation is unlocking new possibilities for freedom, prosperity, and security. Now, the question before us is not whether or not the most powerful technologies of this century will reinforce free societies. Is it going to reinforce our free societies, or will that technology be shaped and twisted by malign regimes that seek to use those technologies for control and coercion? You see, over the past several months, I've talked at length about the challenges we face in transforming the War Department to address current and future missions all in service of meeting the needs of the 21st century warfighter. I'd like to think we've already made dramatic progress in the Pentagon's culture by reviving the warrior ethos, and we're moving out quickly in transforming our acquisition ecosystem as well. But today is about how we supercharge innovation at the War Department for the era ahead. Innovation is happening at a pace we can't even foresee, and we need the entire enterprise, our enterprise, to embrace the urgency required for this moment. Since the end of the Cold War, the defense industrial base in our country has consolidated. This makes it difficult, if not impossible, for new creators of technical innovations to win business at our department. The result is a risk-averse culture that prevents us from providing our warfighters with the best resources that America has to offer. That ends today. Simply put, the United States must win the strategic competition for 21st century technological supremacy. Artificial intelligence, autonomous systems, quantum, hypersonics, and long-range drones, if you talk to Elon Musk long enough, he will tell you how important hypersonics and long-range drones are, and he's 100% correct. Space capabilities, directed energy, and biotechnology are the new areas of global competition. The challenge is that our legacy approach to technological development assumes that technology moves in a predictable, linear conveyor belt from lab to design to development to prototype to test and qualify to program of record and can only be provided by a handful of companies that have consolidated dramatically. Now, while this system provided us with the weapons that won the Cold War, it is archaic and inconsistent with the 